Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to the Cricket Happening Show today. Uh, in this part of the Cricket Happening Show, well, as you know, today is the last day of the year 2013. And I was telling uh, that something dramatic should happen uh, on the last day of 2013. Yes, it definitely happened in the first test match between, of the first test match of the series between Pakistan and Sri Lanka, which was played at Abu Dhabi, where Pakistan bowled out Sri Lanka for 204 on the first day itself and then uh, just batting that wicket that they lost in the uh, last ball almost uh, that was the time they just lost a wicket uh, absolutely in the last over of the day when Kuriram Manzoor was run out other than that they did a fine job 46 for 1 was their final uh, score, uh, score at stumps on day 1 of the first test match of the series between Pakistan and Sri Lanka which was played at Abu Dhabi <laughs> so uh, we are going to talk about that and then the one thing, uh, the other thing that I would like to talk about is the Indian team has been selected for the tour of New Zealand. The test and the one day squad have been selected. There are some new faces which have come into the team. Uh, well, the, uh, the, new, the, the most uh, real rookie person uh, who has got an opportunity here uh, is 23 year old Ishwar Pandey who is a, who is a, right, is a pace bowler who actually moves the ball both ways <coughs> and he plays for uh, Madhya Pradesh and the Ranji Trophy and he has actually topped the Ranji Trophy charts uh, as far as bowling is concerned taking the maximum number of wickets and that's the precise reason he has merited a call into the Indian team for New Zealand. Well, so I'll be talking about that and also Stuart Binney uh, has been included in both the versions of the game, the Test Match as well as the One Day uh, Internationals and you would remember Stuart Binney, uh, he's a very good all-rounder, he's a good batsman, he's a good bowler, he's a good fielder we have seen he has made some very sizable contributions in the Indian Premier League uh, as and when he has played there. And as you know, he is also the son of the former uh, swing bowler for India, Roger Binney, who was a part of the World Cup 1983 squad led by Kapil Dev. Well, so first let's uh, have a look at the, uh, how things uh, started and how Pakistan had a great day uh, today on the last year uh, of the year 2013. This was played at the Sheikh Zayed Stadium in Abu Dhabi. Uh, in fact, it was uh, Pakistan who actually won the toss and very rightly they inserted Sri Lanka into bat. And Sri Lanka, well, they had a good start. In fact, with them um, at lunchtime, nobody would have expected at lunchtime. They went to lunch uh, at a score of 66 for 1 with uh, both new openers. Um, in, in fact, let me talk about the debuts. Uh, there were debuts, test debuts for Ahmed Shahzad and Bilawal Bhatti. And Bilawal Bhatti definitely made it count. Uh, with his uh, splendid bowling uh, in tandem with Junaid Khan. So uh, we will look at the bowling and also for uh, for Sri Lanka, it was the right arm of spinner Sachitra Sen and IK making his debut. Uh, just looking at the, before looking at the bowling fingers, let's talk about the match. As far as uh, Sri Lanka were concerned, uh, it was Dimut Karnaratni and Kaushal Silva who opened the innings and things were going pretty serenely for them. In fact, they had a 57 for the worst wicket and only before lunchtime, uh, Pakistan actually managed to disturb this pair when they got the first wicket in the form of Karna Ratni was very very uh, absolutely very patient at the crease but um, Junaid Khan actually had him uh, caught by Asad Shafiq for 38 5 fours it was an impressive 38 from Karna Ratni uh, Kaushal Silva was joined in by Sangakra now that was the time um, after they, they, they went to lunch at 66 for 1 uh, with uh, Kaushal Silva and Sangakra at the crease but after lunch Suddenly, uh, there was a real, uh, the, 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 the Sri Lankan innings went into a real tailspin. As you would see, they started collapsing. Even though they had all the big names there, uh, the collapse started with uh, the first wicket to go today well, after lunch was uh, Kaushal Silva. Now, Bilawal Bhatti, uh, as you know, he has done very well in the T20 and one day, uh, one day squads. And he got an inclusion, he got included, he, got, he made his test debut. And what a debut for Bilawal Bhatti. His first test wicket uh, was in the form of Kaushal Silva, who was caught by uh, Mohamed Afiz of the bowling of Bilawal Bhatti for 20 with two fours, which made the score 67 for two. And then Mahila Jayavardhane followed, followed uh, I mean, this was some very big wicket that Bilawal Bhatti got after uh, dismissing Kaushal Silva. He had the very big scalp and a very bright scalp of Mahila Jayavadhani who returned to international cricket after that uh, uh, break that he had. And Mahila Jayavadhani, probably feeling a bit rusty, was uh, caught by uh, um, Adnan Akmal of the bowling 
uh, of uh, Bilawal Bhatti for 5. So that made it 76 for 3. And Javardhane had a ball uh, which actually climbed on him. It lifted and uh, Javardhane got a uh, nick onto it and Adnan Akmal behind the stumps did the rest. So that made the score 76 for 3. Uh, Chandimal joined in uh, with uh, Kumar Sangakara but uh, Chandimal himself uh, who are, of whom much would have been expected really really disappointed as he as an opportune moment here as uh, he lost that opportunity as Chandimal was caught by Mohamed Afiz of the bowling of Bilawal Bhatti. Now Bilawal Bhatti on his debut had taken three wickets here and very important wickets of Jayavardhan and Chandimal uh, and also Kaushal Silva. So that uh, made the score 76 for 4 and then Kumar Sangakara was sent back to the pavilion by Junaid Khan when Ahmed Shahzad caught him for 16 with one boundary and suddenly the half of the, the Sri Lankan side were in the pavilion with a score on 82 for 5. <coughs> and then Prasanna Jayavadhan who has a very good test record joined his captain uh, Angelo Matthews and uh, uh, but, but Angelo Matthews uh, was, uh, was the one uh, in the company of um, in the company of Prasanna Jayavardhane uh, started um, I mean he was he, he was really trying to settle matters for Sri Lanka but when he saw that Prasanna Jayavardhane was a victim with a moving delivery from um, uh, Junaid Khan the Jagna Akmal picked up the catch and that made the score 104 for 6 and suddenly there was a lot of pressure on Sri Lanka but Angelo Matthews was done very well in the one day internationals too uh, what he did is he decided the attack is the best form of defense instead of staying out there it's better to attack the balling and that's what he precisely did and uh, he saw that I mean um, even though uh, Angel Matthews was actually uh, playing some attacking strokes uh, in his knock uh, he was seeing that the, at the other end uh, he was running out of partners as Junaid Khan had picked up the wicket of Sen and IK for 5 then he picked up um, he clean bowled Rangana Herat with a lovely in swinger for a duck uh, and then luck and then it was the turn of Saeed Ajmal to pick up the last wicket that of uh, Shaminder Ranga but uh, Angelo Matthews did his bet and tried to throw his bat at everything and uh, what he did is because of his uh, attacking um, batting there at least Sri Lanka would be thankful to him that they reached a score of 204 all out before Angelo Matthews trying to loft Saeed Ajmal over the, over the fence uh, actually fell to the bait as Adnan Akmal behind the stumps stumped him and he was gone for 91 15 fours and that was what saved Sri Lanka from being uh, probably you know uh, they, they might have never even expected when the score was uh, you know 82 for 5 but Angelo Matthews uh, the Sri Lankan captain uh, played a lone hand to take Sri Lanka to 204 all out but splendid bowling from and let me tell you uh, all this uh, even though one would be probably feeling that Sri Lanka got uh, probably the pitch had something to do with it. Let me tell you, dear fans, friends, subscribers, there, were, there was absolutely nothing in the pitch. This was the first day. Uh, well, it was all thanks to some good bowling from Pakistan, no doubt, but also Sri Lanka also, you know, contributed to their own demise uh, by actually playing some uh, rank bad shots and um, the pressure started really really building on them and Junaid Khan went on to pick up, take a 5 wicket haul bowling 20 overs, 4 maidens, 58 runs and 5 wickets he's a tremendous bowler and you know he moves the ball both ways Rahat Ali as I said yesterday would have been included yes he definitely didn't get any wicket but he bowled 16 overs, 3 maidens, none for 41 Bilawal Bhatti on his debut, splendid figures 15 overs, 1 maiden, 65 runs and 3 wickets and Ajmal picking up 2 wickets, 14 overs, 3 maidens, 2 for 32 uh, Pakistan uh, started um, started their reply uh, in uh, started their reply to Sri Lanka's 204 all out and uh, Pakistan well they were uh, not in any trouble they were playing their strokes pretty easily as I said um, the Sri Lankan bowling attack according to me uh, the pace attack is looking pretty weak they have to really bank on their spinners Rangana Herat and Sachitra Sen and Ayake the off spinner but Pakistan are very very good players of spin. But uh, well, it was all going well. Kuram Manzoor was playing some handsome strokes. Ahmed Shahzad was also looking confident, and um, Ahmed Shahzad, you know, was making his uh, test debut after uh, doing very well in the uh, T20s and One Day Internationals. Um, uh, Ahmed Shahzad also got his um, uh, debut along with Bilawal Bhatti, and Kuram Manzoor and Ahmed Shahzad were doing very well just before close of play. In the last over before close of play, uh, it was a, a, t a terrible misunderstanding. Kuram Manzoor actually dabbed the ball to cover, uh, went for the run, Ahmed Shahzad didn't respond, probably was ball watching. Kuram Manzoor could not, uh, before he could retrieve and go back to 
regain his crease it was all over as um, after doing all the hard work when uh, Pakistan had the openers had raised 46 for the first wicket uh, just as I said it was the last over of the day which was balled by Sajid Sen and IK and Kuram Manzoor was a victim uh, run out for 21 with four fours <laughs> probably that uh, probably one would have uh, one thought that uh, that run might have not been taken because uh, just considering that it was coming to close of play Kuram Manzoor played some handsome strokes in his knock of 21 being run out Ahmed Shahzad was looking very good not out on 25 it's close of play three boundaries the balling well um, Lakmal Bolsano was two minutes none for 17 Angelo Matthews one over for six runs five overs one minute none for 18 for Shaminda Ranga uh, Herat Bull five overs three minutes five runs so no wicket Sajit Rasen and I could just bowl one over one ball in the final over and he, he actually uh, Angelo Matthews was the one who, who effected the run out of uh, Kuram Manzoor uh, and Sri Lanka well uh, they would be definitely ruining the fact that on a very good pitch uh, they have made a very very paltry score of 204 only well so that is uh, uh, the situation on stumps on day one at the Sheikh Zayed Stadium in Abu Dhabi and uh, from here uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going we are going to have a look at the uh, Indian squad as you know India's uh, next assignment now they have already completed their assignment in South Africa losing the series 1-0 and their next assignment is going to be in New Zealand and the first match, the first one day international is going, uh, going to be between India and New Zealand uh, uh, that is going to be at the McLean Park in Napier on 19th of January that is in the new year so uh, just talking about this India squad uh, India have selected the squad for the test matches as well as the one day matches now as far as uh, test matches and one day matches is concerned one thing that I would like to talk about is about the new person who has come into the team uh, he might be very very little known I'm sure he has played in some IPL matches uh, he's a person his name is Ishwar Pandey uh, he's a very uh, tall bloke uh, who uh, actually um, has 48 wickets in this 2012-13 uh, season in the Ranji Trophy uh, and he has uh, he has taken uh, 48 wickets he was the leading wicket taker in the 2012-13 and uh, he has really really bowled pretty well and that's what has merited him an inclusion uh, he's very tall he gets the ball to bounce a lot and he and I'm told he's also moves the ball both ways so he's a very good find he's a very good um, um, uh, selection for India so Ishwar Pandey has been included and he also bowls at uh, 130k it seems so he has been included so he's the newest face as far as Indian cricket is concerned Ishwar Pandey the Madhya Pradesh fast bowler has got a call up to the Indian squad and he's pretty tall he's uh, six feet and three inches and I'm told he bowls at uh, at the mid 130s so uh, just looking at that so that is Ishwar Pandey so that is the selection as far as the other selections are concerned uh, as far as the test matches are concerned uh, the, the, the team reads uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni uh, Shrikant Dhoni in fact Ishwar Pandey has not only been included in the test matches he has also got an opportunity in the one day internationals too so he has been given a, lo a real um, a long rope here uh, he has been included in both the squads in that one day and the test squad by the Indian uh, Indian uh, selection committee now uh, as far as uh, the uh, as far as the one days are concerned now one thing that I would like to talk about uh, is that uh, uh, because of the healthy competition uh, that has developed in the uh, Indian um, Indian team uh, which is good to know uh, the the best left arm spinner in the land Pragyan Oja uh, fails to find a place in fact for me Pragyan Oja is almost an automatic inclusion for me in test matches but uh, unfortunately due to healthy competition uh, it has been very difficult for India to actually include Pragyan Oja as you know he didn't play against South Africa too and um, uh, looking at New Zealand, New Zealand uh, predominantly are not good players of spin but uh, definitely India has uh, India considering the fact that they would be definitely getting some seeming tracks in New Zealand uh, they wanted to actually strengthen the pace squad and that's what they've precisely done so they have Zahir Khan, they have Mohammad Shami, they have Ishan Sharma, they have Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, they have Yuma Yadav, then they have Ishwar Pandey so so basically I think that's the right way to go but as far as spin, spin is concerned uh, they have uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin uh, and they have Ravindra Jadeja I'm just trying to see yes it is uh, they have um, uh, Ravi Chandran uh, Ashwin and uh, Ravindra Jadeja uh, are the two so Ravindra Jadeja probably getting the nod ahead of Pragyan Oja uh, the reason being because of his batting capabilities and his uh, superlative fielding skills 
and he also took six wickets in that game. So that has really put uh, Pragya Anuja out of the squad. Well, and can, uh, one can feel uh, very sorry for uh, Pragya Anuja, the left-arm spinner. He is the best uh, left-arm spinner in the land in India right now. And it's a uh, real, uh, I would only say, well, I only feel sorry and my commiserations to Pragya Anuja that he couldn't make it to the Indian squad. Uh, but, well, uh, you know, as I said, uh, but one, one good thing for India is that it's really healthy competition here as far as spinning, spin, spin is concerned. And let's look at the uh, Indian other batting. I mean, uh, the Eng Brigade, uh, which did uh, the work against South Africa, will have this opportunity. They have decided to have the same batsmen, Shikhar Dhawan, Murli Vijay, Chateshwar Pujara, Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma, Jinkya Rahani, who did very well in the last test with that gutsy 96. And then they have a reserve wicketkeeper in Ridhiman Saha from Bengal. So, as far as tests are concerned, so that is the composition. Uh, I think it's a fair selection. Um, and um, let's look at the one-day internationals. Uh, looking at the one-day international that has been selected, I've already spoken about uh, Ishwar Pandey, the gangling uh, pace baller from Madhya Pradesh. Uh, let's uh, look at uh, what they have done as far as one-day internationals are concerned. And one-day internationals, uh, and also Ambati Raidu is there in the test matches and the one-day squad, so that is good. Uh, but uh, uh, there is uh, in the one day internationals one thing that I would like to say here is that Yuraj Singh uh, is out. Yuraj Singh uh, who has been even right now as you know uh, in four matches that he have played in the Ranji Trophy he has been really really struggling to get runs. Uh, in fact um, I am told he has got only probably uh, 19 or 20 runs um, in, even in the Ranji Trophy matches in four innings. In fact uh, as you know in the one day series that um, was played against Australia he just got only 19 runs after playing four uh, four one-day internationals. So, uh, Yuvraj Singh has been left out of the team. Uh, Mohit Sharma, who uh, who was uh, who got an opportunity against Australia but didn't do well, is out of the squad. Umesh Yadav is out of the one-day squad. But as far as uh, the persons who are in, Ishwar Pandey, I've already spoken about. Uh, but one thing for India. But I'm a bit surprised that uh, Varun Arun. Uh, who has been included in the One Day Internationals and, and the reason he has been included is because he's, I, I, I'm sure um, uh, he is the person who even touches 150, he's a Jharkhand bowler who touches 150, he has been uh, in and out of the Indian team, I mean he has not been having a, a permanent place in the Indian team due to injury uh, and uh, Varun Arun, well um, uh, one only hopes that you know I would be really really happy if uh, Varun Arun could actually play in the test matches but Varun Arun unfortunately has not been included in the test matches, uh, but he has been given an opportunity in the one day uh, international. In the sense, uh, Umesh Yadav has been left out from the test squad, from the one day squad, and Varun Arun, uh, who bowls express pace, has been given an opportunity. I'm really looking forward to Varun Arun uh, bowling good on, uh, on tracks, which would be really ideally suited to him. Uh, Stuart Binney, uh, I think Stuart Binney would be, uh, it would be a very good choice. One would remember Stuart Binney, uh, he is the son of the former swing bowler from India. Once upon a time, now he is the selector and his name is Roger Binney and he is the son of him and Stuart Binney is a complete package according to me because he is a wonderful batsman uh, who is not only a batsman who can play, he can also, uh, you know, uh, we have seen in the IPL that when the time comes and the chips are down, he can come and play a very aggressive innings, he can do that and besides he can, um, and he is a very good baller and I am sure Stuart Binney has been included, he is an all-rounder so India is definitely hunting out for some very good all-rounders and uh, keeping that in view, I, think, I thought that's a very good choice because Stuart Binney, what he would do, is a wonderful fielder too. But his bowling, I, according to me, in New Zealand uh, would be of great value because for the simple reason that in New Zealand uh, we have, uh, you, you like, you have, you, I mean, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar and uh, Stuart Binney are the ones I think we would be really watching. Or Mohamed Shami is another who would, can be really keenly, uh, I mean, one can really keenly watch him. But I think uh, as far as uh, Stuart Binney is concerned, I think it's a good choice because, uh, you know, uh, in that uh, particular, uh, in, in climbs in New Zealand and in, on, on wickets in New Zealand, I'm sure uh, uh, Stuart Binney uh, would be a very, very difficult proposition because uh, he, can, uh, he can move the ball in the air and he can also swing the ball. Stuart Binney is a good swing bowler and that's the precise reason he has been included. So I'm sure uh, that's a wonderful choice. And India are also hunting out for a genuine all-rounder and I think Stuart Binney uh, should be the one uh, who could be a genuine all-rounder for India uh, in years to come, if at all he proves himself in New Zealand. So good luck to Stuart Binney. Uh, as far as uh, the other selections are concerned, well, there's nothing to really talk about. Uh, Amit Mishra is there in the team, uh, and uh, this is the composition, and I think it's a fair selection. 
uh, it looks to be good other than you know Pragyan Oja probably due to healthy competition missing out I think uh, but Varun Arun I would have uh, pr probably preferred Varun Arun uh, Ishar Pandey well um, I'm sure um, I mean um, the selectors have really looked at it in a very keen manner for the future <coughs> because Ishar Pandey is, uh, is just 23 years of old and he's pretty tall and he can get some good bounce but uh, what is required on New Zealand tracks according to me on Kiwi tracks uh, is basically the persons who can actually move the ball about and I think in that context uh, I am really looking out for Bhuvaneshwar Kumar uh, really making a real pitch uh, in New Zealand and also I am looking out for Stuart Binny to bowl well in the one days uh, and Mohamed Shami uh, in particular uh, to really really uh, you know lead the show there definitely we have the experienced uh, bowling of uh, Zahid Khan and Ishan Sharma but uh, still I think uh, the men to watch would be Mohamed Shami, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar and Stuart Binney who could play a great role uh, as far as New Zealand wickets are concerned. Well dear fans and subscribers, uh, nothing else to add so I just wanted to uh, briefly cover the uh, Indian team selection uh, for the, uh, new, the test matches in New Zealand and, and in, uh, test matches in one Indian nationals in New Zealand and good luck to Ishwar Pandey too who has been selected in both versions of the game and uh, what, a, what a dream call up that would be uh, that uh, I mean a dream call up and you know uh, that would be great news uh, for Ishwar Pandey uh, and also Stuart Binney as, uh, saying that you know new year is just dawning and um, I'm sure um, Stuart Binney and um, um, you know Ishwar Pandey would like to put their best foot forward in New Zealand and see to it that uh, they make this year 2014 a great one for them well dear fans and subscribers uh, uh, this is your host Ram uh, ending the cricket show for today on the last day of the year 2013 uh, wishing you all a very very happy uh, and a prosperous new year and a new year filled with lots of cricket that's it from me your host Ram for the cricket happening show for today see you in uh, my probably I mean I'm not sure I'm trying to uh, see whether I, I could actually uh, eke out time uh, to do a uh, a, a short cricket happening show, probably one more cricket happening show uh, whereby I could just recount the tales of two, 2013 in cricket but uh, whether I would be having time I'm not so sure about it uh, time permitting yes uh, dear fans and subscribers I would definitely oblige you uh, but I can't really promise you uh, it all, it's subject to time but uh, yes uh, your host Ram will definitely be there on New Year's Eve and as you know uh, the first match of the new year is going to be starting in a country which would be already celebrating its new year and which have already celebrated its new year and that is New Zealand which I was talking about uh, New Zealand that today is the third one the second one day international was washed out between India and West, uh, New Zealand and West Indies but today it is going to be the third one day international uh, which is going to be played at Queenstown and I'll be there with a full match report tomorrow on this third one day international between West Indies and New Zealand Till then, it's goodbye from your host Ram on the last day of the year 2013. Thank you dear fans, friends and subscribers of Cricket Happenings for your tremendous support, uh, your tremendous cooperation to this show and um, all your valuable inputs to this cricket show. And, uh, and thank you for all the people who have been supporting this uh, cricket show in a great way. Uh, thanks once again for all your uh, wonderful contributions in the year 2013. And again, um, once again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the support you have been given, giving this uh, cricket happening show to become a great success, uh, which is still going on, a great guns. And not only would it be, it's going great guns, um, it is going to be firing on all cylinders from now on. Thanks to your, all your support. Thanks for your company and thanks for uh, your uh, uh, tremendous uh, uh, you know, contribution to the show. Your host Ram would like to end the cricket show for today. Have a great 2013. Thank you.